This is Tristan with Victrus Games. Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'll show you just how easy it is to make advanced shooting mechanics in your game using GDevelop. You may have seen these type of mechanics in games like Enter the Gungeon and thought to yourself, I have no idea how to do that. The good news is, with the Fire Bullet extension, you can do all these things with just a few clicks. The first thing I recommend doing to try out the Fire Bullet extension is to open the game example. So in GDevelop, if you go to the Build tab and click Show All for recommended templates, search for Fire Bullet, and open this game example. Let's hit the Preview button and see what this game looks like. So this example shows you all the various features you can enable and change on this extension. You can control how your bullets are fired, like how fast it is between each shot, how many bullets are shot at once, the arc of the firing, you can add angle variance. This is basically inaccuracy so that you can make your NPCs not always shoot exactly at the player, which is not very realistic and not very fun. If you have more variance, then they basically have very bad aim. Speed variance, this is fun. So if you do like 10 bullets at once, and you want to shoot them like this. Some will go faster than others. Kind of makes like a shotgun type effect is what I was going for with this. Ammo, of course, is obvious. You could have unlimited ammo where you'll never run out of shots. Shots per reload. In real life, most weapons have to be reloaded. If you don't have to reload, you can just say zero shots per reload. With three shots per reload, three shots, reload, three shots, reload. And there is automatic reloading like you just saw, or you can have it so that it will not shoot anymore until you reload. In this, you can use right click for your reload. So you can adjust any of these settings to match your game. There's an overheat mechanism. To get started with overheating, you basically have to set a heat per shot above zero, but you also want to set up one of these cooling things above zero. Otherwise, your, your heat will never cool down. In games, you can give your players a choice of how fast they want to shoot. Like They can shoot fast for a little bit of time, but they can't just lay down on the trigger of the entire game or their gun will overheat. And then you can set up a penalty for overheating. So this overheat duration, like you can set it to two seconds, and so... Once the overheat level gets hit, you have to wait for that two seconds before you can shoot again. In addition to all these settings, this extension is also collecting statistics. So we have fired 242 times. We've created 967 bullets. Now the reason that these don't match is because a shot fired can be multiple bullets. So if we, if we send like 30 bullets out here, the, that still counts as one shot. So this is one shot, and if you look at the bullets created, it's growing really fast. 30 per shot. And then of course I'm also have a reload to complete a statistic. So this can be useful for at the end of the game to give the player some info about how their game went. Okay, so now you've seen all the options you can do and it seems maybe complex and overwhelming. And if you want to see the code for it, you can click on this main game events. And you can see there's quite a lot of code here. Most of this code is mainly just to enable this user interface, but it doesn't have to be this complex. In fact, I'm going to show you how to build this from scratch. So let's create a new scene. And of course, we have to have a dark background because dark mode is best. Let's add a player object. Let's, let's add the red hero. Okay, let's find a projectile. I want to set up a filter so that my pixels are not too small and not too big. Okay, let's try shooting these cars. That sounds hilarious. So this is our player. and This is what he's going to be shooting. So to add the Fire Bullet extension, you click on the player that's going to be shooting. Go to Behaviors, Add Behavior, Search New Behaviors. Under here is where you're going to add it to your player. Okay, I've added it, and I've not changed any settings. I'm just going to hit Apply. We'll delete our little convertible there. I'm just going to rename it uh, Bullet, so it's a little more obvious. So for our logic, let's see if we can make it shoot. So we we're going to click on um, Actions, Add Action. Click on the object with the Fire Bullet behavior, which is Red Hero. Fire bullets toward a position or an angle. I'm going to fire towards the mouse, so I'll say Position. And you have to pick the bullet. Well, this is our bullet object. Okay, so it's created on the player. So the Red Hero. And I'm going to put it on its center. Bounding box, Center X. That basically means it's always going to be the center of the player. 
It's going to come from the center of the player, and it's going to head towards the cursor, which is the mouse. And the speed, we'll just set it at, let's try, I don't know how fast this is. Let's see how fast 300 pixels per second is. Actually, it feels like a slow bullet, but see how it's firing a lot of bullets at once? That's using the default cooldown timer. So if you want to shoot a little bit slower, you click on behaviors, and you go to firing cooldown in seconds. So it's 0.1. Let's make it shoot. 0 0.3, it's about, about three bullets per second. There we go. And these bullets, I'm gonna make them move faster. So instead of 300 pixels, we'll do 500 pixels. Cool, now it looks more like a projectile. Because I have no conditions, this is just gonna fire constantly. Let's make it so it only happens while the mouse is pressed. So condition, mouse button pressed, the left button. Now the shooting will only happen while the button's pressed. So I could shoot here, 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 here. I could hold it down. All right, let's try some more of these features. Let's try the multi-shooting. It currently shoots one bullet at once. Let's shoot five bullets. And the firing arc, 45 degrees. Let's see what that looks like. We'll just leave it at the default. So you can sort of see it's a 45 degree angle is the width of the bullets. And they're all going the same speed and they're all spread out exactly the same. That may be what you want. If you want the inaccuracy, that's called the angle variance. We can set that up. Let's shoot 10 degrees. So now when I shoot, now it looks a lot more chaotic. So you can choose what you're looking for in your game. So this is where you're gonna find all your settings. We've done multi-fire. I showed you overheat already. Here's the settings for overheat. Reloading. By default, there is no reloading, but you can easily say this is a like a six shooter, like a revolver. You get to shoot six times and then you have to reload, which takes two seconds to reload. Now, if you don't have reload automatically, that means that you're going to need to reload with an action. I'll show you how to do that. So instead of the left button being down, let's use the right button. And we'll do uh, trigger once. So when the right button is down, let's reload. So you just click on the player that has the fire bullet extension and choose reload ammo. Okay, so now we should have six shots. I'm gonna actually change it to, so it looks like a, a single shot, a single shot, and we have six shots per reload. It takes two seconds to reload, and then it will not reload automatically, so we're gonna have to use that right click. Let's try it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's not doing any more shooting because reloading is not automatic. If I click right click, it's one, two, there. After I initiated the reload, it took the two seconds. So that's how you do reloading in your game. There's also a setting here to rotate the bullet to match the trajectory. This is enabled by default, but if you are doing pixel art with circular bullets, you may just want to disable this so that your bullets always look beautiful and not skewed. In this case, I've, I'm shooting these car bullets, and if I don't rotate them, the up and down shots look kind of goofy but there are some use cases for where you might want this. Okay, let me just reset this kind of back to default. I want to briefly talk about another extension that works really well with this extension. It's called Advanced Projectiles. If we install this one, you can use it to simulate rockets that start with a speed of zero and, and a positive acceleration, or you can simulate something like a hand grenade where you throw it and it slows down to and stops. You can also have lifetime timers and maximum distance traveled, which could be useful for tower defense games. You can use it to enforce a range of the tower. I'll just show you the very basics of this. I have another video that already talks about this in detail, so we'll just show the acceleration aspects. The advanced projectile behavior gets installed on the bullet object, not on the object that has the fire bullet. The advanced projectile behavior will give it an acceleration of 400 and starting speed of zero and this should make these bullets shoot slower and then accelerate like a kind of like a rocket I, I need to enable this rotate bullets because the advanced projectile extension uses the direction these are facing to know which direction to move there we go so now you've got these really slow bullets that accelerate like they are powered by rockets all right i think that gives you a good idea of how you can get started with very little effort Good luck on making your games. I hope you make really fun ones. If you do make a game using this extension, send it to me. I'd love to see it. 
If you want to see what else I'm working on, follow me on Twitter at Victorus Games, or you can join our Discord server using the link in the description. If you want to support this channel, you can check out my Patreon page, where you can choose to be an extension booster, or a tutorial booster, or a Victorus Hero. The first two are one way you can encourage me to create a specific type of content, whether it's advanced extensions for GDevelop, or more video tutorials like this one. And so thank you to all the people who are supporting this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.